Good evening and welcome to City Limits, the show to provide you with information about the people, places, and events that shape the character of our community. Joining me tonight is Janice Monticello. Monticello, yes. Monticello. Yes. As new representative for the 92nd the district, right? Yes, the so, new 92nd, correct. What, what did you represent last year? Um, it was the 66. But it moved you up like 30. Yeah, <laughs> we, we did, we did. So, yes, um, I, before I represented half of St. Louis County and half of my district was St. Louis City. So with the new district, um, new boundaries, I lost my city portion of my district. So I'm all in oh. St. Louis County now. So you're all county now. I'm all county now. How much did they cut out? A lot? Half, or? yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, half. Yeah, so quite a bit. Yeah, I noticed, I was looking at the map, and I noticed they really, on some of them, they really cut it up real bad. They did, they did indeed, so. so but it didn't it didn't hurt you, apparently, because you no, got real lucky. No, 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 worked it's, hard and made it happen. <laughs> that's better than some of the yes. <laughs> other politicians. It didn't work out so well. Exactly, so. exactly. And I guess every 10 years, that's the thing you face. Yeah, I guess that's a good thing with term limits. I won't have to face the redistricting process again. Well, <laughs> maybe yes and maybe no. <laughs> yeah. We're going to ask, uh, but just for you, I didn't tell you this before, but we're going to ask our representative to introduce legislation for 16 years in either house, whereas the House or the Senate, and change the term for the representatives right. from two to four years, which will work mathematically into that formula. Yes. Because, you know, in our opinion, and, you know, I work with a lot of legislators, they're not up there long enough. Just about the time they really get a good education, you're they go home. You're absolutely right. I've advocated that for some time. If you want the limits, that's one thing. But um, you're, you're right. It's a, it's a big learning curve. We have a lot to learn in a short period of time. And um, so I think that's a good move. Plus, there's too much money interjected into the process when you're up every two years. So it's, I think that would help alleviate some of that concern. So I want to legislate. I want to do my job and serve my constituents, not always <laughs> yeah. trying to raise money for the next campaign. So I had, I had a legislator that actually was just real like this time mentioned that to me that, you know, the first year, it's all learning. You, you go on the boot camp, or yeah. I, I, call it, I call it boot camp, where you guys go out and you go throughout the state and they right. interdoctrinate you into how it works and so on. Right. You go through that, then you try to learn what's going on, and about maybe about the end of the first session, you have an idea, I think. Right, right. And then the second year, you come back and somebody says, hey, now don't forget, you gotta run for election. <laughs> so you, you get done in May, and then turn around and November and you have to have an election so it, there's just no absolutely time. so that's yeah. you know four years would be it would be really nice and it, it would be helpful would allow for some retentivity of things that have happened in the past and build some institutional knowledge which is completely gone now what I what I hear from a lot of um, legislators and people like that have been around the Capitol for some time is that um, you don't build those relationships you used to build, which kind of develop that trust and people are able to forge um, compromises and such because you just don't have that same opportunity um, to build those relationships and, you know, with term limits you're going to be gone so people aren't forced to do that. So um, I guess there's pros and cons. <laughs> well, when we, when we send that to our, Steve Webb is our representative, we send it to Steve. Uh, <laughs> Attach yourself to it if you agree with it, because we're going to try to get as many people as we can. And like I said, I met a lot of legislators, as I was telling folks we went on here, when I was president of the Municipal League last year, I met a lot of legislators from out state. So right. I'm going to try to get some of them to sign on to it. If we get enough support, maybe they'll put it on the ballot. And, you know, I think the, the citizens of the state of Missouri are smart enough to know if you're pulling their leg or not, and you explain what right. the situation is and what problems it's causing. Right. And I think they would, you know, look at it and say, hey, you know, maybe that's a good idea. I agree. I agree completely. And, uh, so. You know, you, you can, you can, our way of thinking too, you, you look at it and you see how many of the laws that were passed get determined if they're right in court or changed by the court. Yeah. That means you haven't had enough time <laughs> or you do not have enough knowledge when it's done. So we hope that we'll do. Yeah. Let's talk about you a little bit. Okay, what do you want to know? Uh, all right, how did you happen to become a state um, legislator? I'm, I'm often asked that question, actually. Um, I was a special ed teacher for 25 years. Um, my district, the um, seat was opening up, and a few people approached me, and I was um, 
not at all interested initially. My, my son encouraged me to do it, and I think what finally pushed me over the edge to do it was that my students were becoming less and less engaged in, in the political process and in government. They felt like they were disengaged, they didn't feel like their voices were heard, um, and they were voicing frustration, and they, they, didn't have, they don't have a lot of faith in government. So I wanted them to know that government can and should be different than the way it is right now. So as my son um, threw back in my face, actually, um, what are you going to do about it, Mom? <laughs> you can't just complain about it all the time. What are you going to do about it? So I decided I was going to try to do something about it. So. So here I am. So you ran and Beginning ran. my second term, yes. Yeah, well, yes. Hey, that's, that's a good thing. Yes. What uh, school did you say you taught? I taught for Special School District, and I was assigned to the Lindbergh School District. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was there for about 18 years of those. 25 was special. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's get something. I always ask everybody this question, so we'll get it out of the way right <laughs> here. Uh, what high school did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> Northwest and House Springs. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're in the St. Louis area. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. House Springs in Jefferson County, right? Right. So it's yes. just right across the border. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, good. What uh, I noticed, I looked on your bibliography out on the state website, and I noticed you sponsored a bill last year, mm -hmm. and you were on, like, you were, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, you signed on to 54 other bills. Right. Sponsor, guys, sponsored, sponsored, yeah, yeah, sponsored yeah. several. Sponsored, yeah. Don't which ask is, me to recite all which of those. Is real, <laughs> well, it's really unusual for a freshman legislator to do that. Yeah. You know? Well, um, I'm actually kind of cautious about the bills I sign on, and I, I never sign on to anything that I haven't read first. But um, yeah, the, the one that I um, sponsored last year had to do it with the AB point of sale cities, and we had a um, situation facing St. Louis County, a lot of the smaller municipalities and unincorporated St. Louis County that was going to be very detrimental um, to those areas. And I, I, most of my district is either um, unincorporated or has very small municipalities. I, I picked up a small portion of Crestwood, which would benefit from the, legisla the legislation that was passed last year. But the county was looking to lose large sums of money, which meant cuts to our park systems, um, less police officers um, in our neighborhoods, and so I was really quite concerned about that, so I sponsored legislation to kind of counter that, and hopefully we were trying to get a more fair, equitable um, distribution of those funds based on population versus just those point-of-sale cities. Yeah. Now we're, we're actually uh, one of the, um, we're not point-of-sale, we are the pool. So. Right, right. You know, it would, it, that legislation, or the proposal that they had that you that you sponsored against would yeah. have killed us sure. so you know that's that's a good thing yeah you know a lot of times people you know you you don't you don't really look far enough ahead to see what would happen you know some of these cities that you know point of ales point of a cities or point of sale cities or a, a cities or as you look at it it seems like it's a good idea right. but Look to Jennings, look mm -hmm. to Riverview, look to St. Anne. They had malls, they were A cities, and they were on top of the world for 20, 25, 30 years. When those malls went away, right. you know, some of those cities probably wish they were part of the pool now. Well, and, it, you know, it's. I think okay. I always look at things, what's, what's good for the common good. I taught, you can tell I taught some civics classes and government classes, but while it's, if you live in those municipalities now, you may benefit in the short term, but I think people lose sight of that we're either all going to swim together, we're going to sink together, and we, um, while your city may prosper for a while, if those municipalities around you start to fail, the problems that are associated with that are going to enter into your, your communities as well. So we need to find better ways to work together. And like you said, look ahead. Um, we do too much legislating and acting with our heads down. We need to be looking up and be more pragmatic and look what's down the road and how it impacts all of us. So because what's good for me is good is what's good for all of us is better. You know, we can't just look at individually. And um, too often we just look at our district or our particular neighborhoods and I just I don't think that's a good way to proceed particularly mm -hmm. at this time so yeah. as, as you as you look at St. Louis County with the 90 municipalities if you think of any other big metropolitan area mm -hmm. it's not like that no and it you know yeah. it is shared among mm -hmm. the whole metropolitan area and that's what the pool tries to do right 
But, right. uh, you know, it... Uh, well, and what they tend to forget, these, these um, municipalities that are benefiting from it, they forget that it's actually the county that takes care of those um, interstates and highways and road systems that takes all of us that don't have those retail um, shops right now. That's how we get there. So St. Louis County does support that. So um, we, need to, we, need, we need to make sure those monies are distributed equitably. Mm -hmm. Well, I look for that to come back up again I, this the year. The rumor I'm, has it I'm they're going to. I'm reasonably sure it's going to come pop back up. Rumor has it, yes, yes. So, so we will probably um, offer counter language again. <laughs> so, but it was interesting when I um, introduced my bill to the here to the committee. They want us to solve this problem back home. They think we should be, um, which we should be. We should be sitting down and coming up with a um, common sense approach to deal with this. So. Yeah, with 90 different ideas, <laughs> it's a little tough sometimes. Yes. You know, there's, you know, there's some commonality there but you know right. it, it's it, it's a difficult situation because you can it see is. what they're saying on their side and you can see what we're saying on the other side and you right. know how do you how do you balance that but it, you know it almost it almost has to be shared amongst right otherwise you know if you didn't have the cities that are the b cities or pool cities if that money was not there, what would have to happen? You'd have to pay such a high tax rate that you couldn't spend money in their communities because you wouldn't have it. That's You'd absolutely, it, that's absolutely it for city right. Services, so, yeah, <laughs> Eventually, we'll hurt them as well. Right. Eventually, we'll hurt Eventually them as well. As well. So you know, you gotta, gotta look at both sides. So hopefully, they'll they'll at least look back at it. I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to come up. I'm sure there'll be discussions, and yes. we'll see where that goes. How about the sales tax on automobiles? Where you, you go to Illinois? <laughs> Come back in Missouri, register, you don't have to pay sales tax. Well, it was problematic, and it was problematic for my district. Um, I have several dealerships, and their, their concern is that um, they're losing business. I mean, during that whole um, discussion that they were, um, the, some of the Columbia auto dealers in Illinois, they were sending mm -hmm. flyers out quite aggressively trying to track uh, Missouri um, car buyers. And, and again, it goes back to we, we have to... We have to do what's right long term. Um, we we don't want to put our car dealers out of um, commission, and we need more revenue in the state. We cannot afford to lose. We can't afford to lose any more revenue. So um, it was fairly easy decision for me to make, um, but um, evidently it was a little more difficult for some. <laughs> I was surprised the governor vetoed it. I, I was Which too. I, I think it would have probably went to court. I think it would have. Probably you know, slightly. it would probably end up being in court because every every decision that you know they want to argue what the legislature does ends up in court. I think we were all a little shocked by the governor's action in that because um, he didn't bring uh, his concerns to the legislature until after we actually had taken the vote. So um, we were kind of caught a little off guard with that as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully you guys can get it fixed this year. Yeah, hopefully. Because I'm losing about $18,000 a year. Wow, wow. So we're losing, you know, a pretty good chunk. And, you know, we're, we're about 32nd or 33rd in the rank of cities in size. So right. We're right. not at the very bottom, so I can imagine what some of the ones above us are right. losing. What, uh, what about the Internet sales tax? You <laughs> think you guys are going to pass that this year? Um, no, to be honest with you, I wish we could, but I don't think that's very likely. Um, again, we're not getting a lot of support from um, up above the governor's office. And I think what people forget, it's not a new tax. It's a tax we should be collecting anyway. I don't think most people realize that they should be reporting those internet sales and the taxes and paying that at the end of the year. And I just think people are um, unaware they're supposed to do that. Again, we need revenue in the state and we can ill afford to keep cutting education, both, both elementary, secondary ed, and higher ed, among other things. Social and mental health services are, you know, have been cut drastically. So it's revenue this, the state drastically needs, and it supports local businesses. We need to protect our local businesses. Right, yeah, it, several, I mean, how many states, do you know how many states have already passed, like 24, 25? Uh, that sounds about I think Marla correct. told me, I think she said 24, 25 one time. Yeah. There's probably more now. Right. So, you know, if we could pass it, I, they need 31, 32, like they need 30 something. Yeah. I don't remember what the yeah. number was, but. We, uh, we rank um, uh, 47th in elementary and secondary ed spending in the nation. We're 49th in higher um, education. We cannot continue down that path or we're gonna, um, it, it's, it's, we're gonna be facing some really difficult decisions. We have to be educating our children and we need more revenue to be able to do that adequately. Mm -hmm. So I noticed, I noticed, the budgets for University of Missouri and so on are constantly cut. Right. And 
I think they're consolidating some of the schools and actually getting rid of some of the programs. And right. That, that's it's, been a lot. It's kind of sad. It is. It is indeed. It I mean, be. we can um, cut corners and we certainly can save money where we can. But um, what people fail to realize is that we're losing some of the more qualified instructors because they're be able they're able to be attracted by larger salaries elsewhere. Infrastructure starting to fall apart. And people can just look at their own home. You can leave that um, roof, let that roof go for a short period of time. But eventually, when that um, roof starts leaking, you're going to have extra um, repairs, and it's going to be more costly in the long run. So it's 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 something. It's a very serious situation we're facing. We, we need to address it quicker rather than later. Mm -hmm. You're mentioning you know, your statistics that were given within the United States. Abroad, it's even worse. The right. schools in Japan and China are far outpacing our right. educational system and what they're learning. And then we wonder why you know, people um, are concerned with where our children are performing, and that you, you can't take that out of the equation. Though our students in Missouri are performing quite well, considering the lack of funding that we, we do give our schools. So, but I think eventually that's going to catch up, and um, a lot of the uh, tutorial programs that we've offered in the past are having to be eliminated, and those help keep kids um, caught up in school and school ready. So we need to face this.